Okay. All right. Well, let's let's move on. I have a new topic, unless you do. No, go you ahead. Have a new topic. Go ahead. All right. So let me ask you a question. Has have you heard any unusual announcement from President Trump this week? Um, he said some stuff. Um, you'll have to. Be, I, he did say something that was. I. I. You'll have to be more specific. No, I just. Um, no, actually, I'm. I'm testing you. I. You know, it's a test to see if my liberal media informed me about a thing. Correct. So tell me what the thing is, and I'll tell you. Uh, no, no, I, would... I want to know. It, it, I mean, is there anything stand out in your mind at all? I mean, there's the there's the shit that I've heard a lot about because Twitter amplifies it because of who I follow on Twitter. That he canceled the Jacksonville Republican National Convention. I see. Uh, and uh, but I'm I'm saying that that's that that's the kind of shit. Uh... That, hold on, hold on. Hold test. on, no, I know that, and also that he is not going to throw the first pitch out at Yankee Stadium on April on August fifteenth. But he oh. did do. He made a policy announcement, and oh. I forget what it is. But okay, all right, test over. Now um, I wish I'd led with this because I don't know if our viewers watch the whole show. Uh, but last twenty five years. I have been hearing that what this country needs is lower drug prices, medical drug prices. And I first started hearing about it, uh, I think, during the Clinton administration. Uh, I wasn't that interested because I was just a kid. I was real young. Maybe, maybe Bush won, Bush Sr. He didn't do anything about it. Clinton didn't do anything about it. After Clinton was Bush too, he didn't do anything about it. Then eight years of Obama, he didn't do anything about it. So for the younger viewers out there, you have to understand that my entire adult life, since I was able to think clearly about subjects, I've been hearing about the need to lower the prices of expensive American drugs. But not a single president or Congress would lift a finger to do anything about it. Three years ago, Trump took office and said, we need to lower the price of drugs in this country. And he has been trying to do something about it. No one would help him, except some of the Republicans. This week, unbeknownst to Rick, or any of the Democrats that I've spoken to. He announced an executive order, and it's, it, there are four elements, but I'm only going to give you the main one to keep it simple. Whatever the price is of a drug anywhere in the world, it has to be the same price in the United States. So let me give you the, the implications of that. That means that if a drug if company... I, but, makes, no, wait, to be clear, it's when I'm sold going to by a particular clear. company. I'm going, I'm going to make it clear, Rick. Okay, all right. If a drug company, Big Pharma, makes a drug and sells it in South Korea or Pakistan for a dollar a pill, even if right now it's $200 a pill in the United States, they have to sell it for a dollar a pill in the United States. So we're going to have inspectors that will go around the world, and we're going to find this pill, and we're going to find the lowest price that pill is. If it's pennies in Switzerland, it has to be pennies in the United States. He issued an executive order, and what this means is there are drugs that people spend 2000 a week on in the United States might go down to $20 a week. 
There are drugs, tip, a typical drug in the United States is eight times what it would be anywhere else. He gave a half an hour speech about all the things that were wrong with this and why it could always have been done but no one did anything. He said he got calls from lobbyists, he got calls from pharmacy, big pharma. Everybody tried to argue with him to say, no, don't do it, don't do it. He said, but I'm doing it. And what this is going to do is, is end up making more Americans healthy than Obamacare or any of the other health uh, initiatives of any of the other presidents because people die because they can't afford these expensive medications in the U.S. And up till now, there were laws preventing them from getting the medications anywhere else. They couldn't even get them in Canada. The last year of Obama's uh, presidency, they passed a law that you couldn't get them from Canada or Mexico. You had to. You had to obey the U.S. pharma, uh, the, the big pharma monopoly. Now, there are two things that I have to say about this. I wept. Uh, I became misty-eyed. I'm a little too grizzled to weep. But I thought to myself, this man that has been persecuted by Rick and the Democrats for th three years has nothing to gain from this whatsoever. He has now lifted a massive burden from the American people. And the only thing I could think of, because there is no downside, is that the Democrats will prevent people from hearing about it. Because if they report it at all, then their whole uh, cathedral collapses of hatred for Trump. And so sure he enough, said he spent a half hour and, talking and, about it. When did, and, where and did sure he? Enough, it's, and sure enough, Rick hasn't heard about it, and none of the Democrats have heard about it. I'm not In finished. my case, it's true. I'm not, yeah, I haven't I'm not heard about finished. it. Yeah, and none of the Democrats you talk to will have heard about it. And, and I even thought to myself, let's have a little fun. Let's see how the Democrat media is reporting this. Well, first, I couldn't find it at all. But eventually I found something on I, I, maybe CNN, maybe New York Times, maybe P, PBS, and they said, this is what they said. They said, as COVID rages, killing Trump adjusts drug prices. That was it. That so was it so, so you, you don't even know what he did and they needlessly brought in COVID. COVID has nothing to do with it. Well, my There's thought no was, one of my thoughts, one of my first, first thoughts was, well, if, if COVID is killing a bunch of old people, who, and old people are our biggest consumers of drugs, I want, you know, like, this is like, which, if, if old people are getting pissed off over COVID, then, then at least this would make them less pissed off. Um, and you can't I, just buy it. You can't justify complete propagandistic silence. It's I probably can, but when we take a break, I'll go read up on it and see what the deal is. You said he spent a half hour talking about what Did he have a news conference? What was the deal? There was a, he had an official executive order signing. And, and, you know, here's the problem with our show. Instead of spending a half an hour listening to the actual speech where he went over all the things that are going to be in the executive order. He went into detail. There, there are four major points. He's cutting out the middleman. He's lowering the price so it's the same everywhere in the world. And he says, of course, that means that they're going to raise the price in Pakistan. Right, they'll right. lower the price in the U.S. And, in, you know, and another thing was we're going to change the laws so that if you want to, for some reason, go to Canada, you can still. So those pills you used to get from Canada, you can get them now for your hair. You yeah, no, like get I get the shit I get for my hair, I get from India. And yeah. in well, India, now, they, they, they sell them to me for a buck a pill. In India, they sell them to people there for three cents a pill. Okay, well now now there's going to be an adjustment. Anyway, well, no, I mean, well, no, because that's an Indian company, so they're not going to be. 
and there I don't know if, if they'll be subject there, there to there will be the there will be a range of competitions and I, I believe it may even it may I, I believe it affects international companies. Like if you want to sell this product here, you've got to sell it for the same price that you sell it in Germany. And there may be other effects where I mean drug it's companies all, I mean there I, I haven't read up on it, but I know that drug companies to some extent rely on soaking Americans and American insurance companies to make their shitload of money to justify what they to defray the cost of developing these right. drugs. And and that's what Trump said. He said this is not fair. He said the American citizen should not be given these crushing burdens so that people in socialist countries like Germany and Denmark can live these idyllic lives with these these drugs they get for pennies because Americans have to spend thousands. And yeah. He said it's just not fair. But what it may lead to, um, and I don't know that it will, but what it historically, drug companies won't spend time developing drugs that don't have a big enough that don't have enough pay consumers. Margin. No, yeah, don't have yeah. enough consumers. If you have a rare disease. Yeah, uh, drug companies may not co develop a drug for it because there aren't enough people to pay a shitload of money to justify what they'd spend on it. Right, and this is how he's getting around that. Apparently, one of the problems is that there are middlemen between the drug companies and the consumer. Uh, insurance companies are middlemen. And he said there are a series of laws that somehow got enacted that make it so that the middlemen make more money than the drug companies. So he said, my bill, my executive order, will, will actually give more money, will, will eliminate as much as possible the middlemen, and will give more money to the, phar to the, the, pharma uh, the pharmacy companies, phar pharmaceutical companies, so that they won't really suffer that much and the pharmaceutical companies can raise their price around the world so uh, so anyway um, there's no downside to this and uh, what I'd like you to do what I was getting at earlier was instead of reading the one paragraph in the New York Times that says Trump's an asshole and this will never work if if we had a proper show, you would listen to the half-hour speech that he gave going over what really happened. You'd yeah, but we don't have a fucking proper show. We, we spend 10 okay, minutes fine. reading about it. All but right, I, never just re I never read the New York Times because I'm too cheap to, to pay to go behind their paywall. Yeah, and all I right. Never so what do you want to do? One article. So what do you want to do? So let's take a break, and um, we've been going more than an hour. Give me eight minutes, and I'll go... Put drops in my eyes so I can fucking see. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Very director. Good. Hello, see. director. Okay. All right. All right. Back in a sec. All right. We're back. We're gonna. So I read up on Trump's uh, four, four proposals quickly, and I wanted to read from both uh, mainstream and also conservative sources. And Fox News accepts these proposals uncritically. However, the Wall Street Journal, which has um, a conservative opinion page, called the proposals haphazard or executive orders haphazard. Uh, sources also noted that, tr that the one that you said, that, that the drug companies have to do favored nations, that they can, sell only, they can only sell the drug for the same price every place in the world, um, that that is only if the drug companies can't come back to him with a with a proposal they like better by August 24th so the drug companies have a month to offer a counter proposal um, so i mean and and half the art two thirds of the article all but one of the articles i read said that this is likely happening now because Trump is in trouble in the polls. No, actually, he proposed it three years ago. But yeah, but they... now, but he he just had the press conference and and said all this stuff. 
now when he's in trouble in the polls. And yeah, I, but, I, but, but he didn't make the executive order. He tried to go through the normal channels. For our viewers that don't know this, executive orders are acts of desperation on the part of a president. So normally a president wants the support of Congress for what he does, but when he finally can't, when he, when he, can't, he knows he's never going to get any cooperation, in the waning months of his presidency, he just threw up his hands and said, this is what I want. Let's do it. This is, the, this is my executive order. If you don't like it, the next president can overturn it. But this is, my, this is what I want done. So, I mean, it's, it's really bitchy, petty, and vile for you to say he's doing this to get reelected. Yeah, but I mean, that's Rick, what every news source Rick, I looked Rick, at except for Fox News. Well, fuck up. Use your common sense, Rick. You did My a good common thing. sense says it's happening now Got because he's ten points behind in the polls and and coronavirus because, and because is, is psychic. And because you're psychic, right? See, that's the beautiful thing about you and me. I never judge people's motives in present in office. I just judge them by what they've done. Because you're you you will always ascribe evil motives to Trump and always ascribe great motives to Biden. And I just say, you know what? I don't know their motives. I just know what they've done. And this is going to bring incredible relief to millions and millions of suffering Americans. And I'm very proud of him and grateful. And what all I have to say, and let's move on to jizzing, um, is read up, read go read a bunch of articles, conservative, mainstream, whatever you want, to get a, a full picture of what's going on with this stuff, if you want to. Now let's talk about a specific drug that I am on. Um, that it, when we took a break, this this topic came up, and I was asked, um, does this drug mess you up sexually? I take a testosterone blocker. There are several of these um, to keep my hair and also to keep my prostate from getting all swollen and making it so I can never empty my bladder fully, which is something that happens to probably most older guys. So I've been taking this stuff for 25 years now, and I still have some hair. Not as much as I'd like, but, you know, there's hair there. Um, and people say, even the drugs, the, the, the little insert that comes with the drugs, says that 1% of, according to their studies, 1% of the people um, who take this testosterone blocker experience an inability to get satisfying boners. Um, and... Other people say that no, that it's more than that, and that it's, there's a whole syndrome that might go along with this stuff. And all I can say is that I've been taking testosterone blockers for for more than 20 years without experiencing significant side effects. Like some people claim that they grow, they experience gynecomastia, or the horrible slang term is bitch tits, where males get fleshy breasts. Haven't had that. Um, in fact, my testosterone level is much higher than average, um, and that might be from lifting weights or just being lucky, or it might because, be because when you take a testosterone blocker, there's a chance that your body says, where the fuck is the testosterone? I need to make more. Um, so, And also, most of the side effects that are claimed by people um, are shit that might happen to guys as they get older anyhow, which it's hard to separate what what might be an effect of the drug from what might just be that you know, your your dick is getting older and noodlier. Um, so I don't know. That's I, I um, I've been satisfied with this stuff in terms yeah, of you know. What's that? All right, and I and I I'd like to say that Rick got me started on this. Uh, God, it must be 20 years ago, at least 25 years ago. It's called finasteride. That's the uh, medical name for it. I'm on finasteride. He's on Avadart. 
which is and... dutasteride. Finasteride knocks out one form of DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone. Dutasteride knocks out both forms of it. Um, Anyway, so the, I've been taking the finasteride religiously, and as you can see, uh, full well, of hair. hair is freaking great. I mean. <laughs> well, it, it, the, I've actually seen, this is kind of interesting for people, I never thought this was possible. Rick actually grew hair back. He had his, the, the pate of his head, which is right here, was like a baby's bottom. Uh, 15, 20 years ago, and it, it actually is covered with uh, well, some fine hair. downy hair, not yeah. the best, no, but no, still it, hair. It, it doesn't look like uh, John Lennon in 1970, but it's 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 a it's a solid thing of hair, and I uh, I haven't lost any hair, and also I had a blood test, which I'm talking about because every week I'm telling you well. Periodically, I'm telling you about my health regimen, and my testosterone is also uh, extremely uh, strong. And uh, we argued, we we laughed about it a few episodes ago because uh, Rick and I both have these very high testosterone levels that cause us to want to do this show. Yeah, um, there'd be we, a lot we, less yelling if we were, you know, if our estrogen levels were higher. Yeah, and normal men our age would be a lot more relaxed and <laughs> not need to not to, not need to be so angry about every issue. Um, so uh, I I don't have a problem with finasteride. Uh, and uh, the other thing I wanted to say um, is that uh, when I took the um, I've been periodically telling you about this new health. Thing that I'm on uh, that is supposed to make you younger, and I did have a result. Um, I've been on uh, specific vitamins that are targeted at my deficiencies that they found in my blood, and I have found that my teeth have gotten thicker and uh, stronger. And I know that because there were big black gaps between my teeth that have now filled with tooth. That's uh, crazy. And, How long have you been on this stuff? This is only about um, four months, four or five months. Now, I, it may be that the gums have lengthened a little bit, and I can't say it's a complete cure. You can still see where it was, but... Uh, I never, they haven't looked this good for for 15 years. Wow. And uh, I'm not crazy. I mean, I can see, you know, that the gaps have filled in somehow. And so I'm going to make a public service amount, announcement because our show is nothing if it isn't about serving others. Um, most artists and intellectual people that spend a lot of time indoors, it turns out, have severe vitamin D deficiency. So I've been taking, uh, uh, which is what the test results showed. So to bring you all up to speed, I'm on a, a regimen where I'm trying to reduce my, my age. So obviously you can't reduce your chronological age, but you can reduce your the age that your body should be. Uh, so there are some 59-year-olds that are actually 49. There are some that are in bad shape that are really more like 69. So Nice. It, yeah, whenever only, anybody says 69, you have to say nice. Sorry. Say it last it's a bill and Ted. Um, so I was able to... Uh, before you go on the, the special extreme uh, supplements, it's good to see if you can change your health, your biological age, just with normal supplements you could get at the drugstore, at Rite Aid, and uh, lifestyle changes, running, diet changes. And so my first result is thicker teeth, and I believe it's because I have pasty white skin, I never go outside, and one of the reasons is that 
old school medicine says that you need about a thousand units of vitamin D. Well, it turns out the more modern things that I've been reading, things that came out this year, videos say, no, you, what you really need is 5,000 units. Yeah. And so I'm on 6,000 plus massive uh, increase in calcium. So that is my first report. And if any of you watching this, and I suspect all of you watching this, are pasty white intellectual people that have no life, never go to the beach, uh, I recommend that you increase your vitamin D to five or 6,000 units. You'll see I'm on 5,000 a day. Yeah, yeah. And, but uh, I'm not going to be convinced until you grow extra rows of teeth like a shark. <laughs> all right. So that's all I have to say about that. Now, uh, what about... Wait, I've got, I've got a thing to say, oh, okay. which is we're talking about hormones. And I've always, for a while, I've wondered, say you're a 12-year-old girl, and your mom married a new guy, a creepy stepdad, and he's just started creeping on you. Could you chemically castrate him by, by slipping him the pill? You know, the birth control pill, which I believe contains estrogen. So could you get a hold of the pill and slip this stuff into the, you know, the guy's whatever and chemically castrate him? Does and that happen? Does, is that, I don't know. Do I'm curious. I, I, I would think that that, would, that might be the... I don't know, but I'm curious because we've kind of chemically uncastrated ourselves, possibly. So I'm wondering if you gave a guy a bunch of estrogen, could you make him less of a creeper? I don't know. Well, you know, well on an amateur I mean, basis, because the courts might, will chemically castrate guys. They will, but I don't know if they use estrogen. Um, one thing that is tried and true is something called saltpeter that we've known about for centuries. It's this, I don't know where they get it, but it's called saltpeter. And that uh, is given to mental patients. It used to be given to soldiers and people that... They used uh, to give it to boys in boarding school so there wouldn't yeah, be so they, much, you know, beating off and buggery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, I don't know if it... Does it actually work? Apparently, and you can give it he, the twelve-year-old girl could put it in his coffee. Well, also, you, saltpeter is a component of gunpowder, so you could take saltpeter and charcoal, and I forget what the other ingredient is, and you could just use it to blow up the creepy stepdad. I have always wondered what the saltpeter, how they could have a substance that is both in gunpowder and reduces your sex drive. If you're a man, it's it's, it's really weird. Uh, but we, saltpeter was a factor in the Revolutionary War. Uh, the Continental Army was low in saltpeter, and so they needed that to fight the British. We, we, uh, we survived by slender means, this country. Anyway, so uh, in other words, the Continental Army was almost wiped out on many occasions. So, uh, do you have any? Go ahead. I just have one last thing, and I think we can wrap it up. Okay. Which is, uh, we've done a little bit of science corner. I have, like, art corner. I've talked about mosaics before, because Carol likes them, and I like them, and most mosaics in the world are terrible. Mosaics are kind of like the AM radio of art media, um, where it's such a, a, a fallen discipline that, you know, you know, all the talented people have gone somewhere besides AM radio, unless you consider Limbaugh talented, right? I get, but um, it's just it's nobody aspires to be on radio anymore, um, and so all the good people are elsewhere. And when you turn on AM radio, is it's just a, a wasteland, and it's similar to for mosaics where th there are so many bad ones. Um, but I found. Um, and the good ones are wildly expensive, like the Vatican has a mosaic workshop, and they've made about 10,000 mosaics in the, in the many centuries-long history 
of the place, and they, they don't come up for auction very often, and I, I can't afford them because they go for thousands of dollars. But I found a place in St. Petersburg, Russia, where they make beautiful, competent, you know, artistically impressive mosaics, and I hate contributing to our enemy's economy, but I love their mosaics. And they sent me, I commissioned one, and they sent me photos of the mosaic in process, and I could see what the process is. And it's fucking cool. What they do is the subject, they take, I sent them photos. I, I wanted the, I sent them photos that I wanted them to turn into a, a mosaic. And they took a photo, and they blew it up to the exact size of the mosaic. And then they lay it down. And then they find pieces of patterned glass that exactly match each little region of the mosaic. When they find that piece of glass, they cut the glass so it exactly matches that, that region. And as they progress, they cut away more and more of the photo that's been replaced by the pieces of glass, and when they're done, they have a work made out of pieces of glass that replicates the photo. Because they work directly incredible. from it. That's incredible. I, the, the secret of the whole quality thing is the smaller the stones, the smaller the piece of glass, the more realistic it'll look. Right. And that's tricky to get really tiny pieces of glass. Right. You have to be really good at cutting the glass. And the deal is that's one secret. The other secret is the joints between the pieces of glass should be as t as small as possible. When when an amateur makes a mosaic, and in the 60s, when we were growing up, lots they, they sold mosaic kits. You know, they, they, they gave you a picture, and then they gave you a bunch of pieces of, of little chips of glass, and then you were just supposed to, like, do it like a paint-by-number thing. But you, but they kind of, but nobody was told to make the glass tightly fit up against it, and so like grout, the, the the gunk between the tiles. There was always a lot of grout, and it that grout makes for a shitty looking mosaic. Almost, you want a mosaic that's got almost zero gaps between between the the glass. Um, sure. So right, you, you feel like um, you're going to get the, this. The begging. That's exciting. I'm so, oh, yeah. oh, I wanted to say, I don't know if um, I don't know if these people want to be mentioned and thanked, but we did get uh, we do have $176. Wow, that's that, yeah, yeah, and that's we've got that. Now understand that. We've gotten $176 since uh, February. Wow! So, <laughs> so that's that's every that's in five months. But some of these people were pretty generous, and I I don't know if they want to put in the in the comments on PayPal whether we can thank them publicly. But one guy gave us 70 bucks. Thank you, so, guy who gave us 70 bucks. Yeah. So I'm I'm amazed. Um. Uh, I think that's it for me. So, uh, if you want to beg, if, if, if you want to jump on that bandwagon, uh, our PayPal address is Lance vs Rick, Lance versus Rick, at gmail dot com. And thank you, people who have donated one hundred and seventy six bucks in the last five months. All right. Good night. Good night.